Storing grades for the November interim report card. Prior to storing grades, you should ensure that teacher mark entry has been completed and that the marks that they've entered are valid. To do that, we recommend that you generate the following SQL report. From System Reports, select the SQL Reports tab. Select the 9 to 12 achievement data for the current school year and select the, in this case, semester one marks and comments from the gradebook. If we were storing marks for semester two, we would select the semester two report. In the teacher name, you just want to use a percent sign, and the reporting period that we'll initially look at is the A1. You would also want to run this for the F1 marks and look at the civics and careers and the F1 marks that have been entered for civics and careers. When reviewing the marks and comments report, you are looking to ensure that teachers' marks are complete, that they've entered comments, but also that they've not used a mark of ALT or I incorrectly. I can sort by the mark column, and when I see the mark of ALT, I should only see it against a K course. So these are all invalid grades, and I'd want to speak with this teacher and have those grades corrected. Remember that I can only be used for grade 9 and 10 courses, and ALT can only be used for K courses. All students in a K course should have a mark of ALT. Numeric marks should never be assigned for K courses. We do not recommend storing grades until all the marks and comments have been entered by teachers. Once that's been done and you've verified it using the report, you can proceed with storing grades. The first step that I recommend before you store grades is to write down the grades that you are storing. In our case, we are storing grades for the November report card. In November, we are going to store the A1 or interim mark for full year courses. Not all schools store full year in November. We'll also want to store the A1 or interim mark for semester courses. Both of these are going to be stored without credit. The courses are not complete and therefore we will not assign credit at this time. We will also want to store the F1 mark for the term one or quarter one courses. These are your civics and career courses and those will be stored with 100% credit because the students have completed the course and they are now going to be awarded the credit. So once you are sure of the marks that you're going to store, you can proceed with the steps to storing grades. To do that, we're gonna to go to system. From the right hand side, you'll select permanently store grades. If your account does not give you access to this screen, you can submit a help desk ticket to have your account updated with that access. We will confirm with the school to ensure that only users that should have that access do have that access. Okay. From my list, I had determined that I wanted to store the A1 courses first. So I'm going to select the reporting term of A1. In historical grades, this should also show up as A1. These two should always match. This next step is very important. I only want to store grades for students who are currently in the class. If they drop the class earlier this school year, I do not want to store their mark. This will just clutter up historical grades and also can cause courses to display on the report card that should not be displayed. Check include only enrollment records that are currently active and that were active on this date and let's select today's date. When storing for the entire school, I do not need to use any of these additional filter options. Next, let's look at the classes by term length. From my list, I had said I was going to store A1 for full year and A1 for semester one. So I can do those both at the same time. Here's my full year, and I am storing those with no credit. The courses are not complete yet. Semester one, I am also storing with no credit. Quarter one, I will have to deal with separately as I'm storing the F1 and not the A1 term for the quarter one courses. 
Scrolling down, let's look at our options for classes enrolled at other schools. Examples of this would be students taking e-learn courses at other schools or students attending classes at our International Languages School. In all these cases, we want to store the grades for classes enrolled at all schools and we want to record the school name of the other school. We want to record the name of the school where the student is actually taking the course. No other changes are required on this screen, but before I submit, I should review the settings and make sure I haven't missed anything. We are storing A1 and they're both set to A1 only for students that are currently in the class. We are storing our full year courses with no credit and our semester one courses with no credit. If they took a course at another school, we're going to store it with the other school's name. So I believe I have everything correct here. I am going to submit. Because I've stored the grades previously for this school, I can see that I have a number of grades being updated. All of my grades are being updated. If this was the first time you were storing grades at your school, you would have zero stored grades updated and all of these would have been inserted. The number of students process should be similar but may not be exactly the number of students that you have in your school. You want to stay on this screen until the process has been completed and this information is displayed. Once we've stored the A1, we need to complete the storing grades for the final marks for our civics and career courses. To review, we will store the F1 mark for Term 1 or Quarter 1 courses. These are our civics and career courses. Because they're complete, we are going to store with credit at 100%. To do that, we're going to repeat the process that we've previously done storing A1s. So we're going to select Permanently Store Grades, but this time the reporting term that we're looking for is the F1 reporting term. And as I mentioned earlier, these have to match, so we're going to set that as F1 as well. F1 represents our final marks. We only want to include students that were actively enrolled in the class as of today. Now with civics and careers, it's important to ensure that you've selected a date that's within the term. So if my term had ended, I would try to select a date that was within the last few days of the term to make sure that I got all of the students that were in the course at the end of the course. We are storing our quarter one courses and we are storing with credit. And the percentage is 100%. Although we never have students taking quarter courses at other schools, you should be in the habit of always set setting this to all schools and the other school. I've now made all the changes that I require on the screen, but let's go back up to the top and review and make sure I haven't missed anything. We're storing final marks, so F1, F1, only for those students that are currently active in the course I'm storing the quarter one with credit at 100%, and if we had students taking any courses at other schools, we would record those marks as well, and we would use the name of the other school. I'm going to submit this. It's processing, we'll wait for the results. In this case, because it's civics and careers, the number of students will be much less. So we have 36 students that were processed, 32 grades updated because I've previously done this before, and zero stored grades inserted. Now let's go and have a look at what the storing grades process has done. I'm going to go back to the start screen and I'm going to select a grade 10 student. We'll select student 129. And we're going to go have a look at their historical grade screen. Let's have a look at what the storing grade process has done. This student's historical grades, when we look at the 1415 records, are what were all created by storing grades. A dot indicates that there is no record for that term. A line indicates that there is a record, but there was no mark at the time that the marks were stored. If we look at the history, we can see that 
this record was created by stored grades and then it was updated by stored grades and that makes sense because I have run the process two times. If we click on a record that contains a mark we'll have a look at this interim mark for English. We can see that it has input all of the course information, teacher information, the mark, the credit type, um, if the te teacher had put a comment in, it'll be displayed in the teacher comment area, and we see the change history. If you have questions about storing grades, please don't hesitate to put in a help desk ticket. Thank you.